Good morning, everyone. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm going to put these on. These are not just for fashion. They're for seeing now. <laughs> uh, good morning, friends, and thank you all for joining us here today on this historic and magnificent battleship uh, to celebrate Massachusetts' investments in cultural infrastructure through the Cultural Facilities Fund. Uh, thank you to Megan uh, uh, for uh, having us here today on the battleship. Um, I will say that um, this is maybe my fourth or fifth visit to Fall River, and I got to sneak in a few times with my son, who is uh, a collegiate marine biologist. And part of the reason why I snuck him in was because he is finishing up college this year, and when, when we moved to Massachusetts, he went right to Florida. So he's got no friends in Massachusetts except his dad's. And so I try to sneak him to our towns and cities that have beautiful, awesome waterfronts with great arts projects. So Fall River has been a, a, a place we visited a couple of times. The Vietnam Memorial is really fantastic. Congratulations. Um, I am also so pleased to say hello and to recognize some of our strongest cultural sector champions in the State House. We're joined here today by State Senator Michael Rodericks and Representatives Cara Fiola and Al, Al, Alan Silva. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and also, uh, uh, and, and the Mass Cultural Council is just so grateful for the support and partnership of these dynamic legislators. Uh, whether due to their committee assignments in the State House or on our local district's priorities, um, right here in Fall River, we couldn't ask for a more passionate and driven, effective collaborators than Senator Rodericks, Rep. Fiola, and Rep. Sylvia. Uh, Mayor Coogan is also here today. Uh, thank you for your support of the cultural sector. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it is a pleasure to be back here in your city today. It's wonderful to be here with all of you in person uh, and within such a special and unique space. Uh, you know, about two years ago when I was very new to this job, I was invited by Rep. Fiola to tour the cultural assets in Fall River, and we stopped here at Battleship Cove. Uh, it's wonderful to be back to celebrate your success. Today, with our partners at Mass Development, we are not only celebrating 15 new cultural facilities grants, but also the launch of this year's CFF grant application period. Our Cultural Facilities Fund program staff, Jay Padgett and Miranda Cook, and their partner, Sean Cowlin from Mass Development, are here with us and will be moving to, up to the ward, ward room after this program to offer a briefing on the program and answer any questions you might have about the application process. I hope you will join them after and learn more about this funding opportunity. I now have the pleasure to introduce Teresa Park, Senior Executive Vice President at Mass Development, who has the exciting job of announcing our 15 new Cultural Facilities Grant Program uh, winners. I do feel very fortunate that I get to be the one to share the good news with everyone today. Um, so thank you, and I really appreciate you having me here to um, share this great news. Um, my name is Teresa Park, as mentioned. I am with Mass Development. Um, we are the Commonwealth's uh, finance agency as well as the land bank. Um, and just as a little <coughs> summary of the what we do and the impact that we have, so in fiscal year 22, we finance and manage 356 projects um, that's investing more than $1.69 billion into the Massachusetts economy. So um, it's a combination of the work that we do with MCC and then delivering the Cultural Facilities Fund and other types of programming that we feel can really make a meaningful impact in communities like Fall River. Um, so we're thrilled to be here with everyone um, and to um, highlight the 15 new CFF grants, uh, which total over $1.5 million. Um, uh, enriching the cultural fabric in many of these places, uh, from cities to suburban to, su to rural communities in the Commonwealth. So without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and announce the 15 recipients. Um, I'm just going to go down the list. I know that there is a press release that's been issued, so the full details would be included in that document, uh, but, but in summary, um, we have the Barry Players uh, receiving funding to create an accessible entrance to their theater. In Chester is the Community Fair Association of North Chester, Chester Hill, and Littleville, so making more of an in, in regional impact, um, facilitating the handicapped access for the, to their uh, facilities. 
in Amherst, uh, the, through the Downtown Amherst Foundation, they will be a recipient of funding to support the renovation of the Drake. I don't know if any of you went to UMass Amherst like I did and have memory of the memories of the Drake, but it's good to see the name coming back and, uh, and, and being reinvented um, to be more befitting of the um, current economy. Um, uh, Lynn Auditorium, and they will be using the funds to purchase and install an integrated stage lighting system. Um, the Middlesex Canal Association, Bellarica, to, or some people like to say Bellarica, if you're not from there, um, to complete the new Canal Visitor Center and Museum. We have uh, the Museum of Science in Boston, and they will be addressing some deterioration and structural maintenance to their parking garage. Um, by the way, anyone here so far from any of the um, facilities that I've announced? Please feel free as I bring it up, just raise your hand so that we know. Um, towards the end, I'm gonna maybe have you all stand up and just so we could give you a like, nice round of applause. Um, the New England Aquarium, uh, and they will be using the funds to upgrade building automation system. And then we have it also in Boston, the New England Historic Genealogical Society for, um, for, um, for some climate control and energy efficiency system. In Salem, you have the Punto Urban Art Museum, and they will be um, establishing a new headquarter with some additional services provided, including gallery and cafe and gift shops. In Gloucester, uh, Rocky Neck Art Colony will be replacing their rear access door, as well as doing some um, facade work. In Seekonk, we have the Seekonk Fire Museum, and they will be using the uh, grant funds to repair their historic fire station housing. Um, which actually houses thousands of artifacts um, of importance to their cultural, to their storytelling. And then in Worthington, you have Seveners Concerts, Inc. Um, they will be doing foundation work and new windows to um, better improve the uh, building to support the, um, the venue and the operations. Um, in Williamsburg, we have Snow Farm, the New England craft program, and the funds will go towards renovating interior and exterior walls as, as well as some other interior improvements. A um, couple more, uh, USS Massachusetts Memorial Committee, Inc. in Fall River. Um, and the, the funds will go towards, yay, home court. Um, and it will, the funds will go towards uh, the, to restore the stewards' birthing compartment aboard the USS Massachusetts and, and create signage exploring the history of segregation in the United States Navy. And last but not least, the Wang Center for the Performing Arts in Boston. Uh, they are getting funds to help with their energy efficiency. Given the scale of their theater, I think that could go a long way, as well as improvements to the marquee for both the Wang and Schubert theaters. Um, so I also want to take a moment to give a shout out to our staff. I know Je um, Sean Callen and Jan Cohen are here, but there are a number of people in working with MCC who've put in all the background work to make this all possible. I'm just the voice, and I get to like be the, the the person in front, but they're the ones that actually get all the work done. So, um, also shout out to everything that they've done to um, get to where we are right now, and um, recognizing the importance of how these kind of investments build a community, add that special fiber, and add the vitality that we all seek for in the places that we're living <coughs> work. So, I want to thank you for this opportunity, and so return the podium back to Michael. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing uh, collaboration, and uh, I, I just cherish the times we get to spend together. Um, and I also, uh, last year we made a number of um, tweaks to the application and the process to, to pretty much try to guarantee that anyone that applied would get some funding. So I'm really very excited about this. And it's great to hear about some of the projects, the accessibility project at the at, in uh, Chester for the fair, which is really great. And I just talking to Megan, who we're going to hear from later to tell you about an exciting project. Um, this morning I heard about scraping of rust off the, off the, off the, the part of the building and, and, a, and a new hangar and helicopters being painted and all these different projects. So we, we, we definitely want to keep taking care of our buildings. Uh, in Massachusetts, we have some of the longest and historic and, and um, the nation's first uh, venues. So we want to take really good care of them. Um, all of this was made possible by our supporters in the legislature and by the Baker Polito administration, who in May released its fiscal year 23 capital spending plan, which includes $10 million for the CFF grant round again. Uh, now I would like to introduce three key partners on Beacon Hill, Senator Mike Rodericks, Rep. Cara Fiola, and Rep. Alvin Silvia. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm State Senator Michael Rodericks, uh, and congratulations to the recipients of the Cultural Facilities Funds grant. This funding is further commitment by the Commonwealth to preserve spaces for art and culture in order for them to flourish. Cultural and artistic expressions build in our community's identity. Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said of the Museum of Modern Art, when men dedicate an edifice for a common enterprise, they are at once celebrating an achievement and announcing a purpose. That statement is as true today as it was in 1939. We celebrate our artists in Massachusetts' storied past and announce here today that theaters, museums, and cultural programs are to be preserved and improved upon for many generations to enjoy. As chair of the Senate Committee on Ways and Means, I can attest to the positive fiscal impact these investments will make on Massachusetts' cultural economy. To preserve and upgrade artistic locations is to invite the public to visit often, engage thoughtfully, and take pride in the community. Battleship Cove in particular represents a unique opportunity to educate the public and our youth about World War II. The USS Massachusetts has been a monument to heroism and sacrifice of Navy sailors since the museum opened in 1965. Our continued support of its preservation makes it a landmark destination for Fall River and a site of honor and reverence for our veterans. Grants from the state allow this impressive ship to remain open. The Massachusetts Cultural Council has done a stellar job in rewarding efforts to improve and maintain the locations where art and culture meet. I look forward to the tangible changes that will be made to raise the standards of our artistic spaces and increase, increase accessibility for all who wish to engage in cultural opportunities in the Commonwealth. I could not be happier um, to see uh, the investments that have been made. Congratulations to, uh, to all the recipients. Thank you to Mass Development. Thank you to the Mass Cultural Council. Uh, when we created the Mass Cultural Facilities Fund back in 2007, our intention was to ensure that all of our artistic and cultural spaces throughout the Commonwealth, especially the small ones, the big ones do pretty good. They have large endowments, right, and they survive but it's the small ones that add so much vibrancy and life to communities throughout the Commonwealth. We wanted to make sure there were opportunities for them to get necessary funding for them to grow and to thrive. So thank you, uh, everyone, for being here. And uh, please uh, take the opportunity to tour this amazing ship. Uh, think about it. And it's, when this ship was um, in active service, and it was for years, and some of the service was very high-level combat service. It's, 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 been, it's been hit a number of times by enemy shells. Um, there were always over 2,000 young men living on this ship. And when they, when they were not engaged in active combat activity, they were scraping and painting and cleaning and maintaining these, these tons of steel on salt water. Uh, so now that these 2,000 uh, resident maintenance custodians are no longer on board, it takes a lot of work uh, to maintain uh, this vessel uh, on the water. So, and we thank everyone for helping uh, preserve what we call uh, Fall River Statue of Liberty, the welcoming sign as you enter the city over the Braga Bridge. Thank you all. Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> Great to be here with you all on the battleship. Uh, uh, pleased to be with you all and uh, celebrating some of the amazing organizations that are receiving cultural facility funds in this grant round. Congratulations to Battleship Cove uh, and all the recipients. Uh, I had a cousin visit from Georgia this past weekend and her um, nine-year-old twin grandsons, they're a perfect target audience. Uh, they were here, they roamed the ship, they ran around, they had a ball and she said, boy, that was fabulous and Fall River looks amazing. So it was really heartwarming, and uh, thank you, Megan, and your team uh, for doing all of this. Um, thank you to the Mass Cultural Council and Mass Development for your work in administering these well-deserved funds. These investments in the physical infrastructure of our cultural facilities bolster Massachusetts tourism and creative economies. As House Chair of the Tourism, Arts, and Cultural Development Committee, I'm proud to support these investments and to work with Mass Cultural Council as they continue to promote and invest in the arts and cultural sectors. The Cultural Facilities Fund allows for our Commonwealth's nonprofit institutions 
to focus on capital improvements statewide, including design, repair, renovation, expansion, or construction of nonprofit cultural facilities. These funds allow organizations to plan for the years ahead and help to ensure that our cultural assets will be here for future generations. With many organizations still feeling the effects of the pandemic, the continuation of grant programs such as the CFF provides stability and reliability. These investments are increasingly necessary and important as many creative organizations are dealing with years, if not decades, of deferred maintenance. Here in Fall River, the South Coast, and across the Commonwealth, our, cult our cultural institutions need continuing support. I'm proud that Speaker Mariano, Chairman Aaron Michaelwitz, and the entire House of Representatives continues to see that importance along with our very own Senator Rodericks, Chairman of House Ways and Means Committee, his whole body, and our local delegation who join us every day in supporting these efforts along with our mayor. Uh, we together will be able to continue to fund Mass Cultural Council and as a state be able to continue to help facilities like our USS Massachusetts expand programming, adapt to technological changes, and assist with continuing this message mission for decades to come. With that in mind, this is not just about organizations receiving funds today, but also the opening of the next application of the round of CFF funds. Um, Fall River in the Narrows has also received these funds, and it's important that any of you interested please take advantage. Of course, they'll be on site here to answer your questions. Please, um, if you're not here today, reach out to them uh, or reach out to one of us, and we will be sure to connect you to the MCC. Thank you again, Mass Development, for the role you continue to play, and congratulations again to today's recipients. As House Chair of this committee, I look forward to continuing this work with all our partners here to make sure that our cultural organizations continue to be supported as we move forward. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's, it's still morning. Thank, thank you, Mass Cultural Council, Mass Development. Um, my remarks are going to be kept about 30 minutes or so, so. <laughs> I just saw, I, I know, uh, Senator Rodericks alluded to the maintenance on board the ship, you know, and congratulations to all the recipients. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was a city at one time, uh, 80 years ago. Um, and... In 1965, I was 12 years old, you can figure that out. I was selling tickets uh, to come on board the ship, 50 cents. Well, the price hasn't gone up that much. Uh, and it's very difficult to maintain this ship. So any, any contribution, uh, any grant is so important um, to maintain this, this massive vessel, but so important to not only, not only the city of Fall River, but to the entire Commonwealth in the country. This is the largest uh, World War II um, museum uh, fleet in, in the country. Uh, very important as we look uh, back at our history as a Marine Corps veteran uh, during the Vietnam conflict. Um, we've seen countless numbers of veterans uh, come on board and visit. Um, so uh, this is, very important with regard to maintaining this vessel and continuing uh, that aspect of our culture and, and uh, as we move forward. Thank you all very much. Uh, thank you, Senator and Representatives. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it's fun to partner with you. Uh, I am so pleased to welcome Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan. Well, this is very special. So good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here with everybody today. Uh, I want to thank Michael Bobbitt, Teresa Park, and obviously the Mass Cultural Council and Mass Development for this lovely program, this grant program that helps so many uh, organizations across the state. And it's great to welcome everybody and our many, many familiar faces to Fall River as we stand today on the Battleship Massachusetts. Battleship Cove is much more than a... Um, cultural facilities. It is a key piece of the community puzzle. 
And it is so symbolic of Fall River that during the recent contest we did to uh, redo a logo in the city of Fall River, the battleship was probably the second most common item used across all the logos right behind the Bragger Bridge, which it stands next to. Cultural attractions like Battleship Cove, the museum, serve many, many purposes. They provide important recreational opportunities to all our residents, like the Battleship, many events to honor our veterans and welcome young families. They boost our economy and are crucial to many of our tourism efforts. These iconic cultural landmarks are a source of pride for everyone in the city of Fall River. And as our waterfront grows, we are fortunate to have several cultural landmarks anchoring this area. The Battleship, the historic Carousel, Heritage State Park, the Hutner Visitor Center, and the Narrow Center for the Arts, all are within easy walking distance of where we are right now. And as we continue to recover from the COVID-19 epidemic, on, onward and upward, the arts and council, the arts and cultural com community should go. I am so grateful that Mass Development and the Mass Cultural Council are investing in facilities like the USS Massachusetts. Again, I want to thank everybody and I want to thank the team from the Mass Cultural Council and Mass Development for their hard work to strengthen cultural facilities in Massachusetts and far, far across our Commonwealth. And I want to thank everyone for coming out today. Thank you all very much. And Meryl Streep filmed here recently. <laughs> that was awesome to see. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to bring up Megan Rathbun, Executive Director of Battleship Cove, to tell you about some exciting projects. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you, everyone from the ours everyone seated here today, Mass Development, Mass Cultural, all of our representatives from both Fall River and the state at large. We are incredibly grateful here at Battleship Cove. As you've just heard kind words from everyone seated up here, um, we have been an institution in Fall River since 1965. We represent all of those who served not just from the state of Massachusetts, but across all branches of the military and all conflicts. We're surrounded today by the 13,000 names of those killed just from the state of Massachusetts in World War II. But we are incredibly grateful to receive this funding because it allows us to continue both preserving this ship and restoring compartments that were not previously accessible to the public, the stewards birthing, mess attendants birthing down on third deck, but it also allows us to tell the story of every member of the crew of this ship. It allows us to tell the story of segregation in World War II, to talk about the fight for integration in the 1940s, and it also allows us to work with our other historic ships, which we have been on a National Endowment of Humanities grant with the USS Intrepid down in New York, specifically to digitize our historic collections and to create over 40 education programs aimed at telling the underrepresented stories in the Navy. So we are incredibly grateful today. I'm so happy that you are all here aboard the USS Massachusetts. If you've come before, welcome back. If it's your first time, welcome aboard a battleship. Um, and afterwards, I am more than happy to take anyone around on a tour, if you would like. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity. We are incredibly grateful. Thanks, Megan. Uh, we have with us uh, our county council member, not county, I don't know where that came from, uh, <laughs> council member, I'm from Montgomery County, but I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, our council member, Kathleen Castro, who represents Bristol County. That's where county came up from. <laughs> Kathleen, please come up and say a few words. <laughs> We are in a county, as Michael said, it's Bristol County, not another county. But I want to thank Michael and, and all of the group from uh, the Mass Cultural Council for being here. It is my privilege to serve on that council and uh, to uh, ensure, as I think Michael and the others know, that we get our fair share here in Bristol County of the monies. And uh, there will never be more money than there is right now, so keep that in mind as uh, we move forward with the ongoing grants and opportunities to the Mass Cultural Council. Uh, I thank all of you for coming today. Uh, it's great to see you here. And uh, I spent quite a bit of time through the years on this ship, coming to meetings and being part of it all. So it's, uh, it's fun to be back here today. 
Thank you. Can't wait to get a, a hug, Kathy, before we leave today. Uh, oh, we can do it now. We can do it now. Great. Um, okay, so we're, we're going to gather for a group photo, but I did want to say two things. One is that uh, on November 1st ends our pandemic relief funding program for individual artists. This is, again, thanks to our legislature, we received quite a bit of money to give out to those that have suffered from the pandemic, which I'm assuming is everyone in this room. But we want to make sure this goes out to especially artists that haven't been um, included in grant programs before. So please help us by spreading the word, not only to any individual artists you know, but people that work in the cultural sector that maybe don't identify as artists. So they work backstage, they hang lights, they work front of house, but also artists that don't get included, like drag performers and DJs and um, uh, contract curators, please spread the word. Those grant programs close in, um, in two weeks. Uh, we have gotten the grant application down to about 10 minutes. We don't want to make it hard for these artists to apply, and we're giving out about 3,000 of them. So please spread the word about that. Uh, and I wanted Jay to mention a little bit, because we're turning our attention to helping you all greenify your organizations. So Jay has a workshop that he has coming up. Did you want to saying something about it? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I think Miranda and I, uh, yeah, we, we can help anyone who wants to know about the upcoming opportunity to apply for, for grants. And uh, if you just got a grant, maybe the administration of that so that we could, we're just here to answer any questions you may have. And we're going to be available, I think, in the next room. The ward room. Uh, after the, the ceremony. And there's a workshop, is an online workshop about the green? Um... Correct. Yeah, it's the decarbonization of, of cultural facilities. On, and, and on November 2nd, we'll do a webinar that will be recorded. And uh, we'll be sending out the invite to everyone. But I think it's a, a great opportunity for us to uh, think collectively about reducing the carbon footprint of our facilities. So, thanks. Great. That ends our program. So Jay and Miranda will be next door. Thank you. Jay and Miranda will be next door. Um, and we want everyone to gather down here so we can take photos uh, to memorialize this monumentous moment. Come on down. <laughs>